All right, everybody, let's go ahead and you ready to go. Let's light this candle and uh, get everything ready for the uh, this session of Buck Talk Radio. You ready? I'm ready. Hang on, hang on. All right. And here we go. All right, welcome to this week's edition of Buck Talk Radio, brought to you by the fine folks at Woodhaven Custom Calls, Flex Fletch, Game Hide Clothing, Elite Archery, Scout Archery Equipment, and, of course, we're talking about Slick Tricks this time of year. I got our friend Jeff Lindsay on the phone from the Lindsay Way, and I'm potting him up right now. Jeff, good evening. Welcome to Buck Talk Radio. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing today? Well, that's all right. I tell you what, I got to go. Uh, do me a favor. I want you to tell everybody about your trip real quick. I got to go grab an extra uh, monitor because we we weren't we were going to do this live on the heavy on the live stream, but uh, you just had a flight delay, so I got to change something up. And this was last minute, so I apologize, folks. But uh, Jeff, tell them about your trip real quick. Give me about forty five, fifty seconds. All right, no problem. Yeah, I, uh, I probably 260, 280 pounds, and, and he, he'd come in right up the edge of the clover field, gave me a perfect 25-yard you know, shot, and I shot the deer, hit him what I thought was pretty good. I knew I got his lungs, went in there, gave him two and a half hours, and jumped him up last night, um, backed out, went back this morning. He was 150 yards away, so all is well. It ends well. It's my first buck of the year. It's a good feeling. Uh, just, just a great few days in Kentucky that, that I'll never forget. My first Kentucky book. Well, congratulations. That's awesome. Ryan and Larry Thank just, you. Ryan and Larry just got back there and it was so hot. I felt bad for all of you down there hunting. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, you had a little bit of a break the last couple of days, huh? Yes, it was yesterday. Last two days we shot some dove yesterday morning. It probably really only got in the high seventies yesterday. And, and of course that had them moving good and, and it was a, it was a good time. I would definitely i definitely go back if they ever invite me. It was a, it was a fun place, and, uh, you know, these guys just pour their heart and soul into the, in this, these deer farms they manage, or I say farms, you know, just, just kind of far, uh, old cow pastures they've converted to hunting land and, and really done a good job at it with all the native prairie grasses and just giving those deer year-round nutrition. Yeah, absolutely. All right, hey, I've got a Intimidator Ninja Woodhaven Deer Grunt Call in my hand. We're going to give one of these away tonight after the show. So if you're listening on the Outdoor Call Radio app, don't go anywhere when we sign off because we'll uh, tell you how you can win one of those uh, or have a chance after the show. Hey, Jeff, you, Lindsay Way's been around for a while. You guys have a really, really vast audience. Uh, I live in Iowa, too. So when I moved up here from St. Louis, I, I heard I heard your guys' names quite a bit. And, Heard nothing but good things over the years. Can you tell everybody a little bit about the Lindsay Way? Yeah, the Lindsay Way. We were uh, we started about nine years ago. We're actually filming our ninth season now. It's kind of hard to believe. It feels like we just started this thing. But we filmed with Drury Outdoors for 
seven or eight years, I believe it was, and we were on their their outdoor television show, Dream Season. We've done the DVDs. We kind of did a little bit of everything. Yeah. And then um, and we just kind of said, you know, my dad's like, I'm not getting any younger. Uh, let's, let's just do something ourselves, and, and, you know, give us a little more control, give us a little more opportunity to kind of hunt with our family more and, and showcase that, kind of showcase our, our passion, if you will, and, and, and kind of what we do year round. And so we jumped out, uh, did that, started off on the Sportsman's Channel for about, I guess it was four or five years in the last three or four years we've been on the Outdoor Channel and, and you know, YouTube, and, which, you know, in today's world, the, the social media is as big as the, the, the TV, the Outdoor net Channels and Networks. So that's kind of our... That's kind of what we do. It's uh, it's what we love. Uh, it's not what we do for a living, you know. So we're, but it is what we do for fun, and that it's just it's one of those things that you know, uh, the camera could go away tomorrow, and I, I'd still hunt because we, we love it that much. Yeah. Um, but but we're blessed to be able to document it, especially with my son and, uh, and my kids and all, and you know, document their hunts and so have something that we can look back on down the road. Yeah. Well, you probably like it a little bit more, and and the world's changed. Uh, I, I, sometimes I don't think folks realize how much of a, how much of a commitment that is hauling all that camera gear around sometimes, but it's, yeah, it makes it tougher. It, it's, uh, it, when you're hunting, when you're filming first and hunting second, it's not always fun, but, uh, it's a different world, man. And I, I know I had my own TV show for, we were on for 20 years and it just, uh, I mean, when I started back in, uh, 96, uh, we didn't have all the social media and everything that's available now. It's 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 totally a different world than when I first started. That's for sure. Right. Yes, it is. It's a different world, and, and it keeps changing. And uh, you know, TV's still there. It's not going anywhere. Even though yeah. people keep saying it's going to disappear, it's not going anywhere. But yeah. it's definitely there's a lot more emphasis on the on digital platforms, whether it's social media, uh, you know, YouTube carbon tv whatever i don't know jeff i tried taking a picture with me and my bow in a bikini top and it just didn't do anything like i thought it would i, I just <laughs> oh that, that'll do it yeah I mean, <laughs> maybe, maybe if you don't have long hair i i, I don't know maybe I, it's and i got curls i figured it i All figured right. it'd work out good hank and pete good to see you thanks for tuning in tonight we appreciate that so, um, listen, I've been up and I live, been living in I. I moved up here from St. Louis. I knew Mark and Terry from back in the, the when they all started and stuff in Missouri. Right. Uh, but I, I moved up to Iowa 23, 24 years ago, and it's been very good for me. But, the you know, the one of the things that uh, growing up in Missouri and the hardwoods down there and, and, and hunting up here or in Kansas or, uh, you know, some of the other states that are, that are less heavy timbered uh, is uh, probably a better way to say it. It's... It's a, it's a different world. I, I'll never forget my first couple sets um, here in Iowa. You know, you know, on a good set back in where I was hunting in Missouri, if you saw seven eight deer on a set, you were you were you thought it was on fire. And yeah, I, that's and, a good day. Yeah, yeah, it's a good day. And when I when I started hunting up here and saw 60, 70 deer in one set, I mean, my buddies back home thought I was fibbing to them. You know, it's just uh, it's it's a crazier thing, but. Hey, uh, did you grow up in Iowa? Is that where you? Is this? I, I didn't. I grew up in Georgia. Okay. I grew up in Georgia, and so, uh, but I, I vividly remember reading of the North American whitetail. You know about, wow. you know, pinch points and inside corners and, and flat top ridges, and it never made sense in Georgia. All we had was pine trees, you know, right. pretty much, and occasional field or cow pasture. And then when I get to Iowa twenty years ago, it just it was a little over 20 years ago now. It just all made sense, and you start seeing how the terrain funnels the deer, and everything I had read kind of kind of started coming back to me, and it's just a, it's a special place. Midwest is, you know, it's just the epitome of deer hunting to me. I mean, it's just nothing like being in a, you know, a hardwood ridge, hardwood flat in the middle of the rut. And that's, you know, in a, in a tree stand about 20 foot high, that's that's. That's what I live for. It's what I think about year round. No, oh, absolutely. I hear you. Hey, in John. November. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, John. Thank you. John said, "Tell you hi there." Uh, hey, Jeff. Jeff. There you go. Hey, Roger Wild up in New York. Thanks for listening tonight. I appreciate you, buddy. Uh, you know, Jeff. This time of year, um, uh, I won't start hunting probably until that second or third week of October. But our season starts in Iowa, October first. Back uh, back in Missouri, they start on the fifteenth, uh, which is uh, when is that? Uh, next day or two. It's, yes, it, it's, it yeah, next two days. What do you? What's your approach for this uh, time of year when you're going to go start hunting? 
Uh, early season, you know, I I really just like to play in my mind. Of course, I always like the weather in my favor, but, you know, but the, the calendar's November. I'm, I'm hunting every chance I get. But this time of year, especially now that I got three kids, one on the way, I kind of pick my poison on when I'm going to go. And, and I really like to look at the, you know, fronts kind of incoming when I'm going to get a little bit of cold snap or the, the perfect wind stand I'm wanting to hunt. And, and, and I, very rarely are we are we going in the woods this time of year. I believe you can really do more harm than good, even with acres falling everywhere. Yeah, there will be the occasional spots uh, that you can slip in, but I, I really like you said. I like for it to get about around October twentieth before I get in those woods in, in the morning or the evening. And and this year, this year in Illinois, we're going to have a, a you know a really good acre crop. Kentucky, where I was, they have a great acre crop. I was going to be hit or miss based on what we're seeing, but you know, if you do have to get in the woods, if you don't have some, you know, some clover or you know, deer radishes, greens, or something like that, you know, I would really like to focus on when those scrapes start popping up on those those acre flats, and, and that's where if I'm going to get in the woods, that's where I'm going to spend my time. Okay. What now? What about how do you approach? Uh, of course, a lot of the crops and stuff are still in up here in Iowa, where I'm at anyway. Um, you know, and you know, uh, we we start putting out mock scrapes in, in July, late uh, early August, just to kind of see what we got for an inventory on the farm. And I mean, I've got some nice bucks sitting in those mocks already. What do you what do you like to do when uh, if you still have crops in, or what do you try to focus on as far as transitioning areas? We do. We still have crops in, but you know it, that really affects us in Illinois because we got the big out accidents. Yeah, we're not big ag field country down in southern Iowa just because. You know, we got the more rolling hills. We do got some big, big crop fields that border us, but nothing that holds the deer that, you know, we're, we're just waiting on the crops to get cut before the hunt gets good. That's just one thing, you know, thankfully we don't really have to deal with. And we're we're predominantly timber anyhow. So that's yeah. That's where our deer are bedding. Okay. Um, but, so I don't, I have never really had to deal with that a ton because usually we don't hunt Illinois until the middle of October, you know, like you said, second or third week. And by then, all the crops are out over there. Those Illinois farmers, they're, they're getting combines in the field the day, first day they, you know, that moisture's right. So, yeah, well, uh, I, it's I'm, not something I've had to deal with a lot. Yeah, I'm thinking they're going to get the corn out earlier this year than, than the last couple. Yeah, with it being dry. It's yeah, been, be good. It's been so dry. It's, it's crazy. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, vocalizations, we talk about deer calls. Uh, they, you know, the deer are very social animals. They're all, you know, they're either vocalizing or they're leaving, uh, they're putting scent down, whether it's a scrape or a licking branch or, you know, just rubbing on stuff. They're always, you know, checking in and checking out. What do you guys uh, have a, on the Lindsay way? Do you guys have a method as far as calling early season or do you just kind of sit put and be quiet or what, what do you like to do? Well, it's one of those things that I, I carry a drum call on my pack year round. And yeah. Because like you said, deer are so vocal, they're so curious. We heard like does almost grunt at each other a couple of nights ago. Something I've never really heard, you know, they would not maybe deer this close. I've heard it, didn't really know what was going on, but we had two does kind of in this clover field and kept fighting. And they sounded just like a buck grunt. It was kind of getting all the other deer rattled up. So I do believe grunt, you know, this time of year, you know, not laying on it, you know, as hard as you can go, but you get a deer when you can't kind of see where you're at and you just give a little curious grunt. And I think. I do believe it works very well. I've seen that happen time and time again. So I'm always going to carry a front call. Uh, not really going to use it till you know mid October on, and then I'm then I'm you know, grunting and rattling a ton. But right now, I can promise you, it's in the pack for those that situation where I think if I really want to try to get a, another deer a little closer. Yeah, I don't have the Larry McCoy magic, Jeff. Like you know, I I've never seen anybody like McCoy in my life. I mean, he shows up. And he's done in one set within two hours of sitting in the stand. I mean, the deer just come up and they hold their their shoulder open for him and say, "There you go, Larry Mack, have at it." I just I, I, uh, I don't have that kind of luck, Jeff. I, I gotta I gotta work at it a little bit more. But um, I always tell everybody, you know, it doesn't hurt anything to throw a, if you see a deer that's traveling in and out of your shooting lane, uh, or uh, they're not coming down your shooting lane. Rather, it doesn't hurt to. As long as they're not looking at you, it doesn't hurt to throw a grunt out there because you never know. They might get curious and come back downwind and see what absolutely. see what see what that was. I mean, I've had that happen a lot of times, haven't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it, 
that that is one thing you said when you said downwind. Yep. When you go to get vocal, you got to make sure you got your your, your backside covered because they're always going to come downwind, especially early season, unless you know it's something they just can't stand it. They're coming right in, and, uh, or, or if there's another deer involved that they trust, you know. But it, it can happen. I know Larry's like you said, Larry's big on that. Mark's big on that. Mark Strog and those yeah. guys are. Our deer grunt fools. Yeah, Vanderpool, Vanderpool. He, uh, I've known Philip for thirty-five years. He's always talking to the deer. No, oh, he is, man. Yeah, he's like he got his own language, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm not <laughs> quite at that. You know, I've probably, uh, you know, had more luck with that grunt call, you know, more towards that. Yeah. That that cruising phase of the rut, you know, early November. That's when I really get after it. And, yeah. and I don't blind, blind crawl, blind call a lot, but I will. I've had a ton of luck, you know, just seeing deer cruising, you know, try to stop them, turn them on a dime or whatever with that grunt call. And, you know, that new intimidator they got out now, you can make so many different vocal calls or, or vocalization sounds with that. That it's, uh, it, 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 that's the best grunt call I've ever used. And I've, I've used a lot of them. Yeah. Richard, good to see you. Mike, thank you, buddy. John says acorns and hickory nuts are hitting hard on the ground in, in Michigan. Thank you, John. Mike Simmons says uh, same here in Iowa. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate you telling us that. So yeah, you know, I, I it doesn't hurt to blind call once in a while. I don't think Jeff. I mean, if you especially if you're hunting on a standing cornfield or a milo field and you see in those uh, stalks shaking and stuff, you never know what's in there, right? No, you don't. And and, and I don't blind call a lot uh, with, with with rattling. Yeah. You know, in November, but I, it, every year it's like I look back and I I rattled a ton of deer in that I've seen cruising. That's probably my number one effective method. I did that last year on the buck I killed in the hardwoods. But I'll rattle every, you know, 20, 30 minutes when, it, when it's peak of the rut, but it's always, I say peak of the rut, you know, that November 5th through the 15th is when I'll, I'm will i rattling pretty good. But you always look back after it's over, and there's like a two or three day span right in there uh, that it seems like every time you rattle, you're having a deer come in. Yeah. And it's just a magical time, and then the next day it just dries up. You can't get one to come in for nothing. But every year there there's a magical three days, and you never. It's always to be sometime around that seventh, eighth, ninth, somewhere in there. And, and I know that's right before they kind of really get locked down. But but it, it always may may vary a day or two. But I love rattling. That's that's one of my favorite things to do. Absolutely. Hey Jeff, hang on. I got to take a real quick break. We'll be right back on Buck Talk Radio with uh, Mr. Jeff Lindsay. Brought to you in courtesy by our good friends out at Woodhaven Custom Calls, uh, the Intimidator, and the Woodsman. We'll be right back on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. Heading on your next adventure and looking for some snacks to take? Why not pack a snack that tastes great, gives you protein, and What's up, everybody? Pack? Have you heard of Soldier Boy Beef Jerky? Soldier Boy Jerky is slow smoked in small batches to ensure generous, tender morsels that taste outstanding. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky offers the following flavors, sweet heat, original maple or pepper flavors that will satisfy you all day in the field. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky is veteran-owned and proud supporters of the Canines for Warrior Foundation. They also donate to troops that are deployed serving our country. So next time you're looking for snacks from home or on your next outdoor adventure, please remember to reach for some Soldier Boy Beef Jerky available at Sportsman's Warehouse. Soldier Boy Beef Jerky, outstanding taste that keeps you satisfied in the field. For more information, please check us out online at www.sbjerky.com. Veins are very important to your arrow flight and for consistent grouping. Flex Fletch and its fine lineup of products has been helping archers steer their arrows for over 50 years. Silent Night veins are 30% thinner with a much greater taper than veins out there. This contributes to a dramatic reduction of in-flight drag. Flex Fletch veins also have the capability of reshaping or bounce back after pass-through shots on targets or game. This ensures consistent Thanks, arrow flight every time. Flex Fletch offers a variety of colors, sizes, and styles for any archer to use in their setup. Whether it's for 3D indoor or hunting, Flex Fletch has the vein for you. To see these great veins and adhesives like Zing or Flex Bond to get a great seal on your arrow when you fletch, go to your local dealer or flexfletch.com. Flex Fletch, proudly made in the USA, based out of Minnesota. 
get tired of deer smelling your scent? Well, there are things you can do to help stop deer from smelling you. Pure Whitetail offers some of the finest scent elimination products in the outdoor industry. Let's talk about Pure Whitetail's Dirt Scent Eliminator Spray. When they say dirt, they mean it. Pure Whitetail's Dirt Scent Eliminator Spray will give you a layer of protection that will help you stay hidden from that deer's nose. It's one of the finest, most effective scent control sprays on the market today. So next season, let's turn the tables on Mr. Whitetail and fill more tags. It's time to get serious about controlling your scent with Pure Whitetail. All right, welcome back to Buck Talk Radio on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. My guest is Jeff Lindsay from the Le- Lindsay Way, and we're talking a little whitetails today. So, Jeff, I, well, uh, what do you got up next? Uh, are you gonna? Did you say you're going to Missouri next? No, um, my dad's in Kansas currently. He just got there, and he's hunting there for a couple of days. Uh, but I'm going to head into Georgia now. Uh, the Georgia opener happened last Saturday. I missed that, obviously. I was in Kentucky. But I'm going to try to hunt there some this weekend. And then from there, uh, I'm going to head back to Iowa before I go to uh, to Colorado, going elk hunting in two weeks. So oh, looking forward to that. That's a, that's a ton of fun. We go to the same place every year. But – but uh I'm hoping to find one, a Georgia deer that wants to, to give it up here in the next few days. Yeah, how, I mean, how to tell everybody? How does a uh, hunt in the South differ from the Midwest? I mean, is I mean, uh, different strategy. I mean, uh, you got a lot more things to deal with down there, weather related, than I would think that we do in the Midwest. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's it is. You you don't really get fronts. You know, you don't get. I mean, we do have wet, where we hunt. It's kind of Central Georgia. We do get you know seasons per se, but you don't get the weather changes uh, that you that you get in, you know, in the Midwest or up North and, uh, the wind is never consistent, never, yeah. ever, ever. I mean, I don't know if it's cause we live in the pocket down here between the Gulf and the, you know, the, the Atlantic or whatever, but it just feels like it's, it's always swirling. And, uh, I mean, if you can, always said you can kill a mature deer in the South, you know, you can about, you can about beat one anywhere because they're, they're just tough. Yeah. They're, they're just extremely tough. Uh, a few years ago, I guess three or four years ago, they started allowing uh, baiting during season in Georgia. So that's changed the landscape a lot. Um, you know, some people for the good, but but overall, um, you know, it probably does make it a little tougher for, for most people. What's the mass crop down there? Is it is it like pecans or I mean, is it acorns? Uh, no, it's white oak, white oak, white? red oaks, okay. pin, pin oaks. Uh, you know, water oaks. We got it. We got a really similar uh, acorn crop compared to what what the Midwest has, and really what we're counting on this time of year is sawtooth oaks. We planted sawtooth oaks on this Georgia farm uh, twenty years ago, and they have been incredible. When they're, they're dr- they start dropping the first of September, and for about three or four weeks, they would rather eat a sawtooth acre than anything else in this world. I firmly believe that. But we had a late frost this year, and for the second time. In the last 15 years, we have zero sawtooth acres. So that has really kind of got us scrambling on, on what our game plan is. Yeah. Do you guys put food plots in down there, or do you got like we vet, do. do you got vetch? We or, do. I know peanut is. Yeah. Do they hit the, the peanuts pretty good down there too? Uh, they do. They love peanuts. We planted them a few years ago, and they were yeah. incredible. But they're a ton of work. You got to spray them a lot. We got beans. We got corn. Our, our beans did it's okay this year. We had to replant them a couple times, but our corn is. Is doing great. Uh, and we got a lot of clover fields, and we're getting ready. That's another thing we're going to do over the next few days. Me and uh, Cole, our, our farm manager down there, he's he's going to start getting all the plots kind of worked up. We'd love to get them planted before we went to Colorado. That's kind of our goal because uh, you know we can really maybe try to capture some of these rains because usually we're we're getting them in mid October, but now that we got him, we got a new strategy. It's like let's get them in now because anytime after September fifteenth, we're kind of, you know, we don't really have to deal with the army worms. It's another thing, a wild card that we have down here. We don't have to deal with in Iowa. But, yeah, uh, yeah, you can keep. It, you, there's a lot of different factors, man. You can keep all them down there, Jeff. We don't need no Gosh, army. I hate those things. <laughs> yeah, I had them in Illinois like uh, five, five or six years ago. They there was a big wind and it blew the. The gnats, the moss, I don't even know how they work exactly. Uh, but it blew them all in, and they ate up a few of my fields in Illinois. And I'm like, good Lord, I, I, that's not one thing I'm going to have to worry about up there. No, absolutely not. That's that's crazy. 
All right, hey, it's time for the Woodhaven Custom Calls You Make the Call segment brought to you by the fine folks at Woodhaven Custom Calls Deer Calls like the Woodsman and uh, and uh, we got the Ninja. I, I tell you, I like that Woodsman, Jeff. It's it's a really nice call. Yeah, it is. It's a good call. I, I, I like it. So here, here, Jeff, here's your question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, Jeff, it's time to go hunting. What is your go-to tree stand snack this season? <laughs> You know, I always got oatmeal cream pie in my pack, <laughs> and, and I, I very rarely eat it. I had one in my pack the entire time in Kentucky. Yeah. I feel like it's more of a good luck charm. Yeah. Yeah, I was told to ask you about Little Debbie, so I figured I'd oh, ask yeah. it. Yeah. 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 That kind of got pinned on me. I, I, I eat them, you know, in the deer stand. I don't eat them year-round, but, man, I get tagged in everything. You know, there's a thing going around now with a little Debbie, uh, the Christmas tree cake, and, uh, so, I, you know what, I just embraced it and started running with it. But, th- but this week I had some good jerky, you know. I, I usually always got a banana or something like in there, something something sweet, something healthy. You know, I, I got to gotta try to balance everything out because, you know, life is just all about balance and, and about every aspect. Absolutely. Scotty Mueller, thanks for watching tonight, buddy. We appreciate you. All right, hey Jeff, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, thanks for getting on with the with the plane and everything. I understand the traveling can be messed up sometimes. Can you tell yes, her? Sir, and t- I'm sorry about that technology deal. Oh, you're you're good, man. That's that's all right. That's all right. We got as long as we got the show on. That's the main thing. I just want to make sure people get to hear you. Uh, tell everybody how they can experience the Lindsay Way. The Lindsay Way, you know, we're on the Outdoor Channel five times a week. Our main time is 7 p.m. Central on Tuesday nights. Uh, we're on YouTube. We try to upload there once or twice a week. You know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, at the Lindsay Way. We're pretty easy to find. TheLindsayWay.com is where our apparel and everything else is. So, yeah, connect with us. We love interacting with everybody and kind of see what you guys are doing out in the field. And that's kind of what makes makes all this hunting community so special. All right, there you go. Hey, hope, uh, good luck this season if I don't talk to you before. And uh, hope to see you soon. If not, Hope to see you at the Iowa Deer Classic. Absolutely, sir. We'll see you then. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. There, there he goes, Jeff Lindsay from the Lindsay Way. That seemed like a nice guy there. Uh, Larry Mack likes him a lot, that's for sure. So, all right, hey, i uh, got a couple things to tell you about uh, real quick uh, before we get out of here. Um, if you are looking for a new pack, uh, Horn Hunter is, uh, is uh, offering a discount. If you go to Horn Hunter's website, you can use the code RTG20 and get 20% off your, your uh, hunting pack. And they're, they're super nice packs. Uh, we use them on Respect the Game TV, but Larry got that, and he wanted me to share that with you. So please do that. And don't forget, uh, Onyx is offering some great deals right now as well. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Tacticam reveal cameras here in the next couple weeks. Um, uh, we're going to have uh, We're going to have a giveaway. I think I've got a... A six point a Tacticam a POV camera, and I believe we got a trail camera. So stay tuned for more details on that, okay? And then uh, Saturday, we are not going to be live on the radio Saturday. We had some uh, family stuff come up. So uh, we're going to do a, a worst of. Uh, so don't look for us on Saturday, but we'll be back uh, regular programming. Milo Locker has got some new flavors for you to try. If you get a deer this year and you want to try some really good specialty products, they got Philly cheesesteak, cranberry wild rice, summer sausage, honey sriracha sticks, pizza burger patties, and uh, they'll take good care of you. Tonight we're going Bigfoot. We're looking for the big guy, the Bigfoot guy. Uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Daryl Adams, and he is with uh, he's with himself. He's uh, He had a whole bunch of encounters while he lived in Oregon, and we're going to talk to him. Super nice man. He loves to hunt. And uh, we're going to talk a little Bigfoot tonight at 7 o'clock on Unknown Files. All right, and let me do this real quick. September 16th uh, and 17th, we got the Iowa All Breeds Jeep Show in Cambridge, Iowa. If you like to go four wheeling or four running and running your trucks or Jeeps or whatever, go out to Cambridge, Iowa. It's a great place to take the family, and you can do some stuff there. Soldier Boy Jerky's got specials going on, they got subscription services. And all that other fine stuff. All right, I am. Uh, we're out of here, man. I knew this was going to go quick. I want to thank my guest, Jeff Lindsay, from the Lindsay Way. And I also want to thank the people that helped me bring this show to you each and every week. It's Buck Talk Radio on the Outdoor Call Radio Network, brought to you by the fine folks at Woodhaven Custom Calls. They have some of the best deer calls around. Vincent, uh, Diamond D Outdoors, really, really good chest holsters made in Alaska. Flex Fletch, Pure Whitetail, Game Hide, and Sportsman's Warehouse. 
we'll see you next time right here on the Outdoor Call Radio Network. Have a great night, everybody. Don't you go nowhere if you're on the app. All right, let me say goodbye to all my Facebook friends. Thank you, everybody. You might want to hop on the app if you can. I will talk with you in a couple days. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon. Don't, and I am going to tell everybody.